Hey, Jim, nice to see you, hear you. Well, hi, Brooksy, how are you? Doing fine, thank you. We just talked a couple of days ago and uh, everything's fine here. I met my uh, daughter's house with her children. And- uh, Are you with Diana? I never heard of Yes, I'm with Diana and my, the two girls and the son. And uh, I'm, I had to come over here because I don't know how to Zoom. <laughs> yeah, well, nor do I. Uh, not, not very well. You know, I talked to Reggie, who Reggie turned 74 today. So he said he's trying to call you. Yeah, well, I'm trying he to figures call you that, too. Yeah, well, anyway, he figures that, you know, you're so much older than him that at least he needs to reach out to you because you might have forgotten his number. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a great uh, tribute this morning on uh, the, the baseball station, 8.59 on my channel. And uh, they had the 70 World Series, which you were magnificent. I helped you out a couple of times, though. Well, and you know what, I was looking at, Brooksy, you, you, uh, you know, I was funny, I was looking at some of the numbers. Now, I know you're the MVP in the, uh, what, the, the championship series. You went seven for 12. You went seven for 12 in that series, that's like 583. I know you're going to come back because you always did. Oh, no, wait. So, wait. So, then in the World Series, you go something like 9 for 21. So, you were 16 for 33. That's almost 500. Then I, then another thing I was looking at, because um, I thought Eddie Murray might be on with us. All the years you played, 20 what, 24 years, you never even came close to striking out 100 times in a year. No. How did that happen? Uh, I don't know. I, I just make contact. That's all. I, you know, and uh, you know oh, what? Is. is a tired, my tired man, Eddie. They weren't Diana. scared of you, Brooksy. They weren't scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eddie came to the Orioles in 1977, my last year, and I taught him everything I knew. And you see, he had 500 home runs. Well, yeah, and about 3,200 hits. <laughs> Um, hey, Eddie, did you, did you get Brooksy released or was that Rick Dempsey? Did I give him what? Did you get him released or was it, uh, oh. that Rick Dempsey? Well, then he knew he couldn't keep up at the, he saw me my first year. So he thought he better retire. I can't keep up with this kid. <laughs> uh, how you doing? And happy birthday, man. Thank you. We had a great time, Eddie. And yes, we did. happy to see you in Baltimore a lot too. Hey, Brooksy, I want to ask you one question. You know, you both guys got up about 11 times each. How come you had 68 triples and Eddie only had 35? Well, that is... Are you faster than Mine went over the Oh, well, you had I knew to, we'd get that in. You had to play along. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brooksy. Mine went over the fence and, uh, you know, some of those... Oh, yeah, look at the head on that guy. Is that Cal Ripken? Holy yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's bring in another Hall of Famer, another Orioles legend. We saw him a second ago. Cal Ripken Jr. is here to wish Brooks a happy birthday. I'm hey, getting here. I'm getting there. You there? Yes. How are you, pal? Got you. Hey, Brooksy. Happy hey. birthday. Thank you very much. I didn't shave for you today. Sorry about that. I saw him. Yeah. I had to shave my beard off. I had a pretty good beard before I came on today. But uh, thank you very much for calling in. It's very appreciative. All right, guys, we got uh, one more one more Orioles great that just jumped on uh, to wish Brooks a happy birthday. I, I would say that it's not really a party unless Boog Powell is here. Uh, so Boog has jumped. <laughs> on. As, as as Boog gets back on, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have his video turned on here in a second. I think I once heard that the reason you won so many Gold Gloves is because you had such a great target at first base. Now is that true? Uh, that is true. You know, he was a little okay. mad most of the time because he's the only one that didn't win a gold glove. But he told me one day, he says, every time I dig one out of the dirt for you, I'm going to mark it on the wall of the dugout. And after <laughs> the season, you check it out. And you'll have to give me a gold glove. And I said, okay, I'll do that. He's a, he was terrific. Great hands, moved around. And uh, I hope Boog's got his mask on, though. But I still loved him when he was wearing all red, though. When he was wearing all red, that big tomato over there. Oh, you mean with the Indians? 
in Cleveland. With the Indians, yeah. <sighs> well, you know what? Uh, hey, he texted me a couple of weeks ago. He said he, he came up with a new drink, a quarantini. <laughs> hey, he can't figure out East Coast and West Coast times. I get my page. He texts me and stuff at six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning because he don't know I'm on the West Coast. Well, he's already caught some grouper and he's already getting ready for dinner. <laughs> hey, guys, you hey, if you haven't been, you got to go down to Key West and join him. He knows what he's doing on that grill, and there's a reason why he's the. Petite weight that he is now. What is that? Two fifty eight. Look at two fifty eight. You weighing in there? <laughs> oh. well, that was a way. That was a way, and he had to do it in Miami. Well, I don't know if you remember. We went down to Key West to play an exhibition game with Washington. We played on a football field, I think, because I in third base. If you go too far, you run into a. A ring is I shoot that good from. So no one can hurt. Uh, guys, while we while we have you all on the call, um, if you want to go around the horn here, everybody share your favorite memory of Brooks, either playing with him or learning from him, hanging out with him, whatever it might be. Uh, let, let's hear let's hear your favorite memory for this guy. Well, you want me to go first? Yeah, we'll yeah. start with you, Jim. Uh, you know, it's funny. I got to ball bar when I was nineteen, and. Um, you know, you're always kind of, you know, you're in the big leagues. You want to figure out, okay, how would I get here? How do I stay here? What do I got to do to be successful? And then you keep, you start looking around at your teammates. And, boy, what a role model uh, to have in Brooksy. And, and the one thing that, you know, both Cal and Eddie and, and, and uh, Brooks have in common is their consistency. I mean, the fact that they had such long careers and they were able to be able to, I mean, you know, everybody talks about not having highs and lows. But to be able to come there and to have a guy that – and I said this in a, a tweet today. I said, I have never, ever – and I, I've been a lot of places where everybody says, yeah, you know, Brooks Robinson was here a couple of years ago. And I've never had anybody say anything bad about Brooksy. So what a role model to grow up with. And, of course, when you get there at 19 and, you know, here I am at 74, uh, you know, not only a great moral model, but a lifelong friend that helped me get to the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Jim. My favorite memories of Brooksy are when I came to spring training in 1959. My father drove me from Key West, Florida to Miami. And when he dropped me off in front of the ballpark, Brooksy was standing out front. And he walked over to my father and he said, Mr. Powell, he said, don't worry, I'll take care of you. <laughs> No one can take care of you, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you know, we played, we played together longer than any other Orioles has played with me. We were you yeah. first and was here most of the time. And it was like, it was like, uh, it was an honor and it was a privilege to walk on the same field with you. And I want to wish you from the bottom my heart. Happy birthday. And my son, JW, is here with me. Yeah. And you know JW. And JW, well. just handed, JW just handed me a note and he said, hey Brooks, happy birthday from JW, Colleen, and his kids. We always considered Connie and yourself to be the most important part of our baseball and our close family. We wish you both all the best and hopefully we can sit down for crabs again soon. Happy birthday, Brooks. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you, Brooks. All right, Rip. You got to wait. You're the baby of the group. I'm the baby of the group? Do I go last yeah, or I'm you next? Are. Yeah, you, you're <laughs> last. Well, I, I, I think the, the, the one thing that, was pointed out and it was pointed at Brooks is when I'm still in high school and stuff and you watch Brooksy over there picking it at third base. And then I played my first year, complete year in Miami. And somehow I made 20, 20 some errors. And I never forget, they said, that's the way to get to Baltimore. And I went out and I worked and I worked and I worked. And it was amazing, as long as you, could pick up a guy out of the dirt every now and then, 
it was amazing how all your throws became right to your chest, my chest over at first base. And that was awesome. And I also then discovered Uts potato chips from Brooksy. <laughs> 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 I was the potato chip king. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Bob. So, uh, you know, I was waiting for some really good stories that uh, that you would throw out there for uh, Brooksy. I didn't get a chance to play with you, obviously, Brooksy, but I got a chance to watch you and hear from my dad um, on a number, of, a number of occasions. But I will tell you, when I made the, my debut um, after the strike in 81, I got called up, and I got a start at third base. I was a third baseman then. I remember standing over there on that ground. I go, this is hallowed ground. This is uh, where Brooksy made all those diving plays. Um, this is how he made the bare hand play. And I wanted to be Brooksy. And so uh, I tried really hard to emulate you and do all the things that you could do. Could not do them, though. But there's another little funny story, too. Um, when you play a long time, and uh, all of us know that you play a long time, you end up facing – um, sons of people that you played against. Um, like I remember looking at the scoreboard, and when the birthdays started coming up in the 1980s, like I was born in 1960, I'm thinking, man, I'm, I got to get out of here. But I remember a story that was told to me about you, where you hit a home run off of this young kid, you beat him for a three-run homer or something, you run around the bases, and the kid was kind of upset, and you looked at him and said, don't feel bad, I got your old man too. <laughs> I, hit, I hit a home run I hit a home run off of Joe Coleman Sr and then I hit a home run off of Junior too, you're right you got a good memory my man oh. well I remember I faced uh, Mike Cuellar in winter ball when he was uh, still pitching and doing well down there and I took Mike Cuellar um, of uh, Oriole fame deep down there and then I faced his son as well, and it took, it took him deep. So it was kind of a, um, uh, what, what goes around sort of comes around. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, I learned a lot of baseball from your dad. He was the best in the world, Cal. He, I tell you, if you said, hey, I want batting practice at midnight, you do it, and he would be there to help you everything, but through and through. And that's how you became one of the great players of the game. Well, guys. Uh, we got a we got a lot of guests to get to. Any last thoughts for Brooks? Yeah, you know it's funny. Every time I look at those uh, baseball cards and those orange uniforms, Brooksy, I think of you uh, <laughs> because we got them from your from George Henderson and your sporting good. So Boog, Boog looked really good in those orange uniforms. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, is, that, is, is that why you guys sent them down to Miami? <laughs> and we had to wear them the complete pants, the shirt, all orange. Oh. Gosh. All I know, the numbers, uh, Tommy Chope was about 5'6". The number went all the way to his rear end. It was, uh, uh, but again, Boog looked really good at it. <laughs>